Quick question, everybody. Do you recognize this person? Of course you do. That's Leonardo DiCaprio. And growing up, I wanted to be just like him. Ever since the movie Romeo and Juliet, where DiCaprio took that cigarette and smoked it so effortlessly, was when I thought he was the coolest man alive. I thought he was so cool, so much so that I even went out and got his signature haircut. <laughs> Let me ask you another question. Has anyone here ever wanted to be just like a character from a movie? Hello, everybody. My name is Nami Amramokri, and I'm going to be talking about the depiction of teenagers in movies and how it affects our sense of self. According to stats.com, we know that teenage movies rank as one of the highest growing genres and is not going to change anytime soon. But have you ever wondered why teenagers in movies look and behave so differently like normal teenagers like you and I? Maybe you remember these particular blockbuster movies and their scenes. Inbetweeners, where four friends go out drinking and partying and barking on various activities while trying to navigate through adulthood. Project X, where three friends go out drinking and also partying, which holds a party and attracts thousands of teenagers to come. And lastly, your very own, very own George Hefley from Diary of a Wimpy Kid, drinking Coca-Cola in a high school party. As you can see, teen teenagers are always depicted as the ones drinking, partying, and smoking. But have you ever wondered why teenagers do this? Another idea. No, going back to the topic of DiCaprio, sorry. <laughs> going back to the topic of DiCaprio. When I saw him smoke that cigarette, I felt an urge deep down to try a cigarette for myself. Thankfully, I didn't smoke a cigarette. However, it has been found that teenagers are more likely to try smoking because of smoking scenes in movies. A study done in 2001 by Todd Heatherton, a brain scientist and a brain psychologist, found a positive relationship between on-screen smoking and smoking initiations among teenagers. Furthermore, 2,500 children under the age of 18 are trying the first cigarettes in the US, which I find completely absurding. Another idea, teenagers in movies. Have you ever wondered why actors that play teenagers look, like no look nothing like normal teenagers? And the short answer is, Hollywood likes to glamorize teens. The problem with this is that most teenagers don't look like 20-year-old models with ideal figures and perfectly clear skin. The problem is that they're creating these standards that are so far-fetched that they're just creating more insecurities for young, growing teens. Some famous actors that you might recognize that play teenage roles are, for example, Tom Holland. Tom Holland was 20 years old when he played Peter Parker from Spider-Man, who was depicted as being a 16-year-old. Rachel McAdams. Rachel McAdams was 26 when she played Regina George from Mean Girls, who was also depicted as 16. As you can see, Hollywood is creating these standards that are so far-fetched that they're actually damaging. It was during an online survey by the Mental Health Organization where they found 40% of teenagers suffered bo from body image issues constantly because of social media. 35% of teenagers constantly worried about their body image issues because of parents. And lastly, 37% of teenagers were ashamed of their own body image. As you can see, if there's 100 students in the auditorium tonight, between 35 and 40 of us suffer from body image issues. These expectations set upon us to look a certain way are damaging to our well-being. As we've covered, teenagers are particularly vulnerable to the media. So when the hit Netflix series 13 Reasons Why came out in 2017, which involves the topics of self-harm and suicide, suicide rates went up dramatically. And according to the National Institute of Mental Health, they found a 28.9% increase in suicide rates in the month of April 2017, which was when the show was released. Furthermore, according to Lisa Horowitz, a brain psychologist in the National Institute of Mental Health, she said the data proves that teenagers are particularly vulnerable to the media. Therefore, we as teens must be able to not, not <laughs> therefore we as teens must be able to distinguish what's reality and what's fiction and what's acceptable and what's not. Because at the end of the day, you're in control of your body and what you do with it. Thank you.